This story is insane. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another video. Welcome to the channel. Now, today I want to talk about this insane story that seems to have flown under the radar. You wouldn't really hear it from any mainstream media, and I haven't even seen it on any other media, alternative media. Most of the people that I know that I watch in commentaries that would have loved to jump on this story haven't jumped on it at all because that's how low key this insane story is. And if you had read the title on this particular uh, video saying that a man handed a four year old old or going to point and shoot at police officers you would have said it's just clickbait but nope it's reality and it happened in the u.s it happened in salt lake city utah at a mcdonald's drive through now what actually ensued we're going to be talking about on this channel and i'm pretty sure when we talk about that you're going to have a lot of questions you're going to be wondering who is this guy what really happened why did what happened happen why did he do what he did as well as why isn't the mainstream media covering this all this we're going to talk about on this channel uh, but before we do that i want to play you a clip of the reporting from the perspective of police officers so that you guys can have an idea of actually what went down and then we'll talk a little bit more after that now before we do that i want to say that if you guys enjoy me bringing you stories like this that go under the radar please do help me out please do encourage me by smashing that like button down below because it's massively massively important to the video and i sincerely do appreciate it puts this big smile on my face so if you want to see more of this big smile smash that like button now without further ado let's roll the tape now shall we Dispatchers warned police there was a gun involved in a drive through dispute at the McDonald's. But what happened next left everyone here in disbelief. 707, we got shots fired, shots fired. Well, this is a sad day for us because the person that pulled that trigger believed by the father to pull the trigger and shoot a police officer. Officers say the child was in the back of this car as police struggled to take the father into custody. As soon as he was pulled out of the vehicle and they started to take him into custody, one of the officers noticed a firearm uh, coming out the vehicle and he was able to deflect it, but uh, the firearm did go off. The round hit the store and cops got the cuffs on the father, then realized it was a small child who fired at them. Every officer that's here today just can't believe it. We're beyond belief that this something like this could happen. Sheriff Rivera said officers didn't know it was a kid with a gun at first. They could have fired back, not knowing who was in that vehicle, but they held their restraint. She said it's that restraint that kept the situation from becoming even more tragic. He's a hero in my mind. He saved a life today. This is a child who thought it was okay to pull a firearm and shoot that firearm at police. All right, so you guys, you saw that, you heard that. Now, what really went down and what led to that was initially there was a report that, you know, there was a fight that broke out in front of McDonald's drive through and that's the reason that the police officers came over. But it was soon corrected because that's not what went down. What really went down is this father from Utah, 27-year-old Sadat Johnson, that's all we know about this guy, uh, went to a McDonald's drive through and decided to get a McDonald's burger or maybe I think maybe a quarter pounder with some pickles, who knows? And um, by the time they gave him his orders, he probably found some pickles in it or something and he was not happy with the order. This was the wrong order. And what a normal human being would have done would be, hey, let me return this thing back to them and tell them, hey, you guys gave me the wrong order. I need you all to change it. But no, 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 no. This brother brought out a gun. He pulled out a Glock and pointed it out the McDonald's employee and told them, I'm gonna kill someone if y'all don't change my order. So anyways, this uh, McDonald's employee, they must be really, really good negotiators uh, because they were able to convince this guy to go to the parking bay to go and wait so that they can bring in the new order. Uh, whoever did that, I think, should actually be thinking of joining the police because they will make a good negotiator. Anyways, um, he does go there, park and wait for his order. But instead of the <laughs> McDonald's employee bringing him his orders, I think the orders came from police officers. You see what I did with it there? Anyway, he's so the police officers came around and started giving him some orders to get out of the car. He refused to, but they were able to apprehend him, but they didn't apprehend any gun. Now, as they were arresting him, a gun pointed out from the back seat, and one of the police officers was able to see the gun and swatted the gun away, but not before one shot was let loose. 
Luckily, the shot hit no one but the side of the building or somewhere on the McDonald's building itself. And the police officer quickly yelled, child, 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 or kid, 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 from whichever report you read it from. Anyway, so he made his other police officers aware that it was only a child that shot this gun. What was insane is that this man who was brandishing a gun and threatening people had a four-year-old in the back seat and a three-year-old in the back seat. Both kids were his kids, and he was doing this right in front of them. Not only that, he encouraged the young kid to actually fire at police officers if he gets arrested which leads me to why would somebody be so insane as to do this now for me i got my own theories and my theories are as follows i don't think this guy cares more about those kids i don't really think he cares about their life i think he's looking at a situation whereby he could get his ass some money because telling a kid to shoot at police officers and if police officers didn't know it was a kid they might have returned fire and those kids would be dead and today Today we will be talking about something different it would have become a bigger story than it actually is and it is already insane as it were so you would see all this mainstream media would jump on stories like this and say hey you see another kid being shot by police officers these white supremacist police officers evil police officers demonic or demonized police officers they will find more reason to demonize them now this particular guy that did this i tried to find the mugshot of this non-skull but there was no mugshot anywhere you can gather and try to research and find this guy as much as you want you're not going to find anything on this guy but I did my due diligence i still went on and did some research based on his name the only thing i found online was his car and he had a pretty nice car too and now uh, if we're going by shank Hugo, who said don't judge you know because when you take a good look at some videos when people were robbing in san francisco said they had nice cars so they couldn't have been black people yeah guys before you make a uh, uh, rush to judgment on who did it uh, be careful on this one. There was a lot of nice cars in that in getaway scene. Okay, uh, I think I saw a Mercedes and a BMW in there, mm -hmm. and it looked like a lot of young kids. They a lot of them appeared to be white. A lot of them appeared to be white. A lot of them appeared to be white. Um, and so, and this is a rich area of town. So if we're going by those um, soft bigotry of low expectations of black people, this man could not have been a black man. But at the end of the day, I did do my due diligence and I tried to find out if this guy was a black person after all. The name Sadat Johnson is definitely a white name, isn't it? If you know what I mean. So I dig deep and um, what did I see when I went on Facebook? I kid you not, when I Googled that name, a whole bunch of people showed up. None of them were blonde hair, blue eye or skinhead with a swastika tattoo on them. They all look like me. And then I found this particular guy here, this guy right here in front of the screen. I placed his picture right in front of you. Okay. And he lives in Salt Lake City. So I don't, did some more digging and I looked at the comments on his Facebook, cause his Facebook is still up. And this is what I saw. Tim McDaniel said, bro, did they ever get your order right or what? And then I looked at more comments. And that already told me that, yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy that we're looking for. This is definitely the guy. He has 129 comments on his page right now, and he's actually in a relationship. And a lot of people are starting to comment. Somebody said, uh, Brittany Hancock, run as fast as you can. Get your kids away from this thug. So obviously, this blue eye, blonde hair guy is actually a black guy. Hence why his mugshot is nowhere to be found. Because this story is absolutely insane. What this guy did is nothing short of insanity. And I don't want to say that in a way whereby I mean it literally. I just mean that this person is a crazy person without actually having a lunatic problem right because when you say that this is the exact thing that blm is going to jump on when they try to bail this guy out they're going to come up with the story that oh being a black man in america being an oppressed person in america this young man is suffering ptsd 
PTSD would mean post-traumatic uh, slave syndrome. That disorder. That's what they're suffering. This is the new narrative that Black Lives Matter has been pushing when they've been actually bailing some of these criminals or some of these violent criminals away from prison and saying they have some sort of a, a PTSD. They are suffering from, you know, several years of systemic oppression and they are suffering from slavery. It's amazing that people that actually were the first set of people that got their freedom from slavery wanted nothing to associate themselves with slavery. But seven generations later, we are getting a lot of black people using this as a crutch, as an excuse that because their ancestors suffered slavery, not them, that they are experiencing the PTSD, probably on behalf of their ancestors. Their ancestors were strong black men and women who actually achieved a lot. They not only achieved their freedom, they actually achieved things like their own Black Wall Street until it was destroyed. They've actually had inventors. They've done a lot of things to build this very country that many of these black people have somewhat been convinced that they are like a second rated person in their or a second rated citizen in their own country. And I believe this is the reason why mainstream media did not want to jump on this because it doesn't fit the narrative of a white police officer shooting a black person. It doesn't fit the narrative of police officers actually harassing a black person for some reason or racially profiling uh, people because I've seen a story that was so uh, minuscule in my own opinion, although the story went viral of two 14-year-old kids where one is black and one is white. And when they were fighting, police officers came to separate the fight. But the actions that the police officers took afterwards, to me, looks like racial profiling because they focused more on the black kid than they did the white kid. They tackled him. They did all sort of stuff. That story made CNN. Benjamin Crump jumped on that story to come and defend this young kid, probably suing the state for the actions of those two police officers, a male and a female. But this story that is very much more important that could have gone south, sideways, you get nothing about this story anywhere. It's simply because it doesn't fit the narrative. It doesn't tell people the full story that things like this continue to happen in America that people don't usually hear about. But this is why I make stories like this so that people will hear about them and people will know the truth that look, crazy things happen from all sides and crazy things happen from all races, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, even though the news doesn't want you to know about it, we at the alternative medias will do the best to let you know about it. But let me know what you think about this whole thing. Do you think this guy has PTSD? Do you think he was in his right to do what he did? Or you think, um, yeah, there's no defending this guy. There's nothing we can do to defend this guy. And what do you think about him handing a four-year-old a gun? And what do you think about the mainstream media not actually attending to this story, talking about how big and how dangerous, how crazy this story could have become if it wasn't for the heroics of one, one police officer who not only saved the life, but actually saved the department of police as well as the image of police at this particular moment in time. Let me know what you think about this does this change your mind about police officers as well that maybe every police officer should be dealt with individually and that police officers aren't out there hunting black people and just looking for every excuse to kill them let me know what you think in the comment section below i want to thank you guys for watching this video hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did please feel free to smash that like button down below massively massively important if you do so that does help the video and also consider subscribing if you're new ding that bell for notification for whenever i upload i'm uploading more often now so please do consider uh you know doing that and share the video as much as you possibly can till the next time that i catch you again take care of yourself peace look after yourself and i'll see you on the next one bye bye now